Hey everybody, Jem Skillfield here with Able Cine in Burbank. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Cinema Raw Light. This is a follow-up to Ian's video, the part one, where he talked about working with Canon Cinema Raw development software and also DaVinci Resolve. In this part two video, I'm going to be talking about working with Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro 10 with Cinema Raw Light files from the Canon EOS C200. So let's get started. Okay, let's start with Adobe Premiere Pro CC or Creative Cloud. And I'm just going to talk to you about what you need to do to support files from this camera in that application. So on April 3rd, 2018, they released a new update of Premiere Pro. You will need to download and install that update to get support for that new format, Cinema Raw Lite. And it is built into the latest update. So now I'm going to go over to Premiere Pro. And I'm just going to go ahead and import media. And I've actually copied from my CFast card the media from what I just shot. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in this file that I just shot outside. And I'm going to drag that to create a new sequence here. So you can see that here. And you can see that this shot is very, very overexposed in terms of the way it looks. Uh, but what it's doing basically is the same thing it's doing in DaVinci Resolve. It's showing me the Canon Log 2 for the most dynamic range from our blacks to our whites, and then also the cinema gamut, which is much bigger than even 2020. So I'll just go in here, and I've actually put into Lumetri some different LUTs that are provided by Canon specifically for their camera. And I'm going to choose the cinema gamut Canon Log 2. That's what basically we are working with here. And I'm going to convert it to a BT709, but I'm going to choose their wide DR or dynamic range version, which kind of rolls off the highlights there a little bit. And you can still see it's totally overexposed in terms of what we've got. But if I just take that exposure, and we just bring it down. You can see there's a lot of information in there. Probably wouldn't do it inside of here. I'd probably go into the curves or the color wheels. But you can see, again, if I just start to pull this down, how much information is actually inside of that file. And that's really it. That's working with uh, raw files in Premiere Pro. And then I'm going to jump over now to my web browser and talk about how to work with Final Cut Pro 10. A little bit different, you need to install a plugin. So you choose your operating system. And in my case, it's High Sierra. And then I'm going to scroll down and look for the different plugins that are available. So you can see here, there's the Canon RAW plugin 1.1 for Final Cut Pro 10. And this is basically what's going to allow you to bring in those Cinema RAW light files. OK, and then once that plugin has been installed, you can launch Final Cut Pro 10. And I have it here. And I'm going to go ahead and import that same CRM, that Cinema Raw Light file here, and import that in as a clip. And you can see it's the same clip that I had before. And then inside of this project here, let me just go ahead and bring that into the timeline. And I can just scrub there. And it will play back. And we can just see that. This is on a MacBook Pro. And you get great performance on this. I'm also screen recording, so that's actually slowing down a little bit of the recording here. So I'll park on a similar frame to what I had in Premiere Pro. And basically, the way it works is if I go over here to my inspector, it is already recognized under Camera LUT that this is going to be, at least by default, in Canon Log 2 and Cinema Gamut, so same as in Premiere Pro. And then what I can do is I can go over and start to make adjustments. So right now here with my wheels, I can take my master exposure and bring it down if I want to. I can start to adjust my highlights and my midtones and my shadows. And again, it's the same thing as in Premiere Pro. All of that information is still in the file. You're still working with the raw file here. And then let's just go ahead and turn off those color wheels. We'll go over here and I'll just apply a filter. Now this one's called Koji Advance. Allows me to choose my camera format. In this case, I am again working with Canon Log 2. And then I can choose, in this case, a film stock. And you can see, wow, that's completely overexposed. But what happens when I start to bring the gain down on that file? 
what happens when I start to affect the overall gamma. You can see that that information is all inside of that file anyway because it's taken that raw file and it's now converted it into Canon Log 2 and Cinema Gamut. So I have all of that information to work with now that I'm working with it in my timeline. So very easy to take something that is very overexposed here and bring it back to life using the Cinema Raw Light files. They are rich. They have got a lot of meat inside of them in terms of being able to push and pull the image. And that makes for, well, it makes for more creative choices ultimately in post-production, especially if you expose your images correctly and you've nailed your white balance. But even if you're a little bit over generally with these camera systems, um, because you're recording that full sensor data, there's a lot more leeway that it's giving you in post-production. So there you have it. That is part two of working with Cinema Raw Lite in this video, of course, in Premiere Pro CC and Final Cut Pro 10. Hopefully those two videos, the one from Ian and from me, will help you just get up and running working with the files that are coming off of this camera system. Thanks for watching.